My wife just got done painting my thing. What was the hardest part of dealing with my thing? The size. It was huge. It was also pretty rock hard, huh? Hey guys, welcome to the Extreme Channel. I'm Mr. X. And I'm Mrs. X. And we are here with an Extreme Collectible. This is The Thing. My Thing. Catch you up to speed, a big part of this channel is all about Extreme Collectibles, specifically statues. And recently, I got in this Thing statue. You can actually check out the original review of it right here, but as you notice in the thumbnail, it was gray. That's, that's because it came as a kit, or what we call an unpainted statue. Now typically with these unpainted statues, you have to find a master painter, which creates a few problems. Problem number one is usually they're booked 12 to 36 months out. Yes, one to three years out. Second, there's a great cost not only to have it painted, but to ship it to them to get it painted and then obviously to ship it back. So for some reason, Mrs. X said, you know what, I can paint statues. That ain't no thing. Of course. Well, no pun intended. I know. So uh, actually, that's how did it go down? How did you decide that you were going to try it? I don't even remember. I think I was like, well, I can paint that. And then I said, no, you can't. There we go. So I highly encourage her to pursue her passions, especially when it saves me money and time. So Mrs. X, you did a whole bunch of research, right? Five minutes. Five minutes of research, because yes. that's all it takes. You can watch YouTube, and then five minutes later, you can be a master painter. Yep. We're very sarcastic if you're new to the channel. So uh, you did a lot of research, which consisted of what? Googling, YouTubing. There you have it. Unbelievable research methods. So Googling, YouTubing on how to paint. I don't know what you did, so I can't carry this conversation. Oh, yeah. I just watched a lot of videos. For those of you that had any questions, they are all answered. Just watch a lot of videos and, and YouTube yeah. it. So uh, she decided to paint it and here's the final product. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to do an in-depth review of just the paint. If you wanna look at stuff like concept and design and sculpt, you can go back and check out that original video. I'll actually have a link of it in the description below. Another thing too, if you're actually a part of the Extreme Channel Facebook page, you'll see that I actually have two thing statues and I posted a picture of both of them. A lot of times I post exclusive content just on there. So if you want to see what that's about, go ahead and check that out. The link is also in the description below. And make sure you not only follow it, but you like the channel. And I'm also going to do a video with both things statues to compare and contrast them. So keep your eye out for that. But let's go ahead and get started looking at this guy right here, yes? Sure. Okay, so first, how do you want to start talking about it? Do you want to start at the top, at the bottom, in the middle? Yeah, wherever. This is what I deal with. If you haven't missed the live chat between me and Mrs. X, and we'll do another one, that's what I get. All right, so, uh, well, I guess I'll have to decide as usual. Uh, let's start at the bottom. Let's start at the base. So the base originally came in a gray color, because that's kind of the color of polystone and unpainted statues. So what did you do to it to make it different? So I first primed it, and then after I primed it, I painted it a, a darker gray color. Um, and then I went ahead and did highlights, shading, went over with quite a few different colors. I put a blue color in there, a light green color, some gray, uh, some more brownish colors, and there you have it. And you used a roller, like... Of course. All right. No, I mean, what did you use to paint it? No, I used my airbrush. So yeah, I think it, she did a great job. Uh, you saw some of the pictures there. I think the, you know, it's difficult to paint a gray base a different gray color. And a lot of the subtle colors she talked about, you can't even really see, but I think it does add a contrast to it, especially under lights. She still maintained a lot of the sculpt in the rock, that rocky texture um, and the different shades of gray, the black shadowing, it, it looks really good. It, it's probably honestly uh, my second to least favorite part of the paint on the statue. And I just realized as I do this review that uh, I need a, I should put thing right in between us so I can't catch any glares <laughs> going back and forth. But you guys know me, I'm pretty honest. I bash pieces that are bad and this could go very badly for me. But uh, next, uh, let's just move up. Let's talk about the boots. Yeah, I like the boots. Yeah, I think the boots are probably um, the best part, actually. I oh. think you did uh, as far as paint. So 
What'd you do with the boots? Yeah. So, so first of all, I uh, went in with my airbrush and I primed everything. Using an airbrush, I went in with the blue, painted all the blue first, used black, hand painted the fours um, on the sides of the boots, and then um, airbrushed the whites to make it super clean. That's yes. intentional, yes. It is, yes. Okay. So, uh, are your, your shoes um, crisp colors? No, they're not. Exactly. So how did you do the black shadowing? So I thinned out the paint even more and then I used the airbrush and did the shadowing. So kind of like spot spraying? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't even know. I didn't watch you paint this. I know. By the way, if you're ever interested in how we film these videos together or how, how I film videos alone, there's actually a membership option for the Extreme channel. You can check it out below. Uh, if you're on a desktop, it's a join button. Otherwise, check a link in the description. Uh, the banter between us that's being cut out of this video is unbelievable. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Let's jump to uh, Dr. Doom's, what would you call this? Would you call this his uh, cape His cape or his cloak? Sure. I'd talk call about, it a cape. Talk about that. So yeah. it's obviously green. It is green, yeah. So, so. again, uh, used the airbrush and primed it. And then I went in with um, a, gr- or, sorry, a green color. And I went with a lighter green to start with, and then I just kind of started building up with a little darker green, did the highlights dark green. So what did you use, you know, for all this stuff, what kind of reference materials did you use? I actually know the question to this, but I'm just kind of prepping you. I mean, like, how did you decide what color of green to go with? Um, well, Dr. Doom is, has a dark green cape, so... Um, I googled it to look to see what his cape looked like. Once again, googled. The and then I believe we have, um, oh yes, two other reference uh, Dr. Dooms to look at. Although you did paint the cloak before this one came in. Correct, correct. The bottom one was around though. And then on the front, uh, what do you even call these? The buttons and rope, the gold? Uh... Yeah, I used, I hand painted that. Okay. And then it looks like some black shading in there as well? The no. Buttons? No. It's oh. just the rope, I think. Okay. It, yeah. Or just a bad paint job, maybe. I'm it's just, not, I'm just, I'm just, it's, I'm just it's, kidding. It's not bad paint I'm job. I'm so in trouble. <laughs> okay, so let's move up to his pants. So his pants had some... Te- yeah, that's where you talk. <laughs> okay, let's talk about his pants. So his pants have some texture on the black parts. Um, so I wanted to make sure it kept, kept that. So I it with the airbrush. Went in with the blue, I think I did black first on this one because there was a lot smaller area of the black. And then uh, with the airbrush, painted the black. Did the same with the blue with the airbrush. Um, And then went back with watered down black and did the highlights on his shading for all of his muscles and his pants. So obviously the majority of the statue and what I would have thought as, you know, someone who has zero painting experience would be the hardest uh, no pun intended, is the actual rock up here. So the different uh, shades of orange that and yellow and, and black you have in here, why don't you talk about that? Yeah, so I started with just like a base color that I wasn't quite for sure if I was going to go darker or lighter from. And that was orange, right? It was like a, like kind of a darker skin tan color. Um, and then from that, I did a lot of the shading in between the rocks with like a dark brown color. And then... I just kept on building it up with uh, different colors of orange and tan. I really like the color of orange that was chosen, and not only that, but how you see the darker impressions in between the rocks. I think it really uh, complements the sculpt. So let's talk about the Dr. Doom mask here, which I'm not a fan of the sculpt on this. Oh yeah, so I just found some primer first uh, with the airbrush, and then I just uh, found some silver paint put it in the airbrush and sprayed it up. So last we're going to talk about the portraits. And if you recall, there's actually two different portraits. And these were the one, the things that not only I think were the most intimidating for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, because of the teeth and the eyes. But they took the longest and you redid them more than any of the other pieces. Yes, correct? for sure. Obviously, a lot of stuff regarding the rock and the orange are, are the same methods you use for the body, which look great. But uh, talk about the, at least on this one, the eyes, I guess. Yeah, so um, with the eyes, I went ahead and just airbrushed the white in there because I think the airbrush gives a lot better, cleaner look. Um, and then I freehand the the eyes. I just use a lighter blue than the pants color and then uh, obviously black in the middle of the eye. Um, and then I went ahead and put a gloss on it so it had like a little shiny, shiny look to it. 
Yeah, and I think that's important because Thing is known as being called Blue Eyes, so you want to make sure you have some of that blue in there. But the other portrait was the more difficult one, so if you want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah so obviously the eyes were the same. Uh, the teeth, I went ahead and started with uh, airbrush, and then after I got a good layer of the teeth or the airbrush white color in, um, I went ahead and did the gums with like a gum looking color. <laughs> and that's that's like gum in your mouth, not, not or, or, chewing gum. Not, not or, oh, are you talking about chewing gum or the thing that your teeth connect to? The teeth connect to, yeah. But chewing gum, some chewing gum is similar in color. I guess it probably is, yeah. And then I went ahead and defined each tooth using the gum color and then a darker color. And then I went ahead and did a light yellow color just to give it a little definition. And then uh, I went ahead and uh, did the cigar also. I did a brown and then kind of tried to do some, looked like it was burning. So a little black around the edges red in the middle so it was burning and then just some other accent colors yeah so overall i think i said my uh second least favorite was the base um my first least favorite i think and, and i'm not judging because i couldn't have done better and i'm probably gonna get my ass kicked because she is freakishly strong here but the eyes i think the eyes were the biggest challenge for her um they yeah, still look, hard they still look decent and the reason why i say that is when i look at the rest of this and i'm honestly not trying to get brownie points this looks like it was professionally painted by somebody who's been doing this a long time. So I'm extremely impressed with, uh, you know, the hidden talent that this this girl had. Girl? There's no getting out of that one. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very pleased with the results. So overall, if I had to give the, the paint a score, I'd say the paint is a 4 out of 5. Uh, extremely impressed, especially if you told me that an amateur actually did this. So uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. Now the real question is which thing is better, this thing or the other thing? So that's where we're going to do an extrumble, which is an extreme rumble or a statue comparison video because I will be selling one of these off. I only need one version of Ben Grimm. Now, what are you going to paint next? I don't know. So we actually have two kits here that you could look at and obviously there's a bunch more coming. Uh, first is that uh, Silver Surfer, that sexy Silver Surfer. And I'm showing a picture of it right now. But you don't want to do sil silver, right? I'll pass. Okay, then the other one is this freak, this weirdo guy right here, this Mad Max type strange creature. You gonna try that one? We'll see. So I also think I have an Age of Apocalypse Wolverine uh, that I saw and noticed it's gonna be shipped soon. I think that was a kit. I need to go double check. But if that's the case, because you wanna try something with some skin color, right? Yeah, you want me to, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, if she does well at that, then uh, we might just whore her out, or her painting services, or either, or both. <laughs> But uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, really appreciate it. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit that Mr. X logo, hit that bell notification so you can subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, check out some of these other custom statues. But thank you, Mrs. X. You're welcome, Mr. X. Call me that in bed. I'd like that. <laughs>